Well, we start uh, with this news. Ukraine says it has agreed to hold talks with Russia uh, at its border with Belarus. This after a phone call between Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky and his Belarusian counterpart, Alexander Lukashenko. Zelensky's office uh, saying the meeting will take place without preconditions and near the Pripyat River. Russian President uh, Vladimir Putin has said that a Russian delegation is in the Belarusian city of uh, Gomel, as you can see on this map here. But uh, the Ukrainian president has said he won't hold talks in Belarus as it's been used as a launch pad for Russia's invasion. Well, for more on all now this, uh, we can speak with Mark Perlman. France 24 is a French politics editor. Uh, hi, Mark. Uh, what do we know about these talks so far between Ukrainian and Russian uh, delegations? Well, uh, that they are probably going to uh, take place unless there is a last minute dispute over where uh, they take place and how they uh, should take place. Uh, but uh, that this was a surprise announcement, I should say, by the office of the uh, Ukrainian uh, president. First surprise is that he spoke on the phone uh, with Belarus's president, Alexander Lukashenko, because uh, in addition to Russia, obviously, there have been bitter exchanges uh, between Ukrainian and the Belarusian leadership because of Belarus being used, as you said, as a launching pad for attacks against uh, Ukraine. So uh, that's already uh, some progress that uh, the two men uh, at odds uh, have spoken. And obviously, Alexander Lukashenko uh, speaks only uh, because Vladimir Putin has told him to do so. Uh, and until now, uh, there was no possibility of direct talks between Putin and Zelensky. So Lukashenko comes in as a, a potential compromise. And uh, now uh, the, uh, the fact that delegations are going to meet without preconditions is also uh, a positive uh, sign, because until now, uh, there was no possibility of talk, sorry. As the fighting continues to rage in uh, Ukraine, it doesn't mean uh, that the fighting has stopped, uh, obviously. Uh, but the best hope for those talks was, first of all, if they take place, is that they could end up with some kind of ceasefire. Obviously, this is still far-fetched at this stage, but it's the first time that there is some diplomatic breakthrough after days of fighting. Yes, uh, indeed. And uh, earlier we heard from Russian uh, President uh, Vladimir Putin, and he said he was placing his nuclear deterrence forces uh, on a high alert. Let's have a listen to that. I ordered the defense minister and the chief of the general staff of the Russian armed forces to put the deterrence forces of the Russian army into a special mode of combat service. Now, Mark, uh, Ukraine's foreign ministry has accused Putin of making the statement to put pressure on the talks. Yes, he said that it was no accident that Putin made uh, this statement uh, before his military chiefs just as news of the talks uh, was being uh, divulged. So he sees this as a way to put uh, more pressure on Ukraine to force them to concede at the negotiating uh, table. Uh, however, uh, both NATO and the U.S., have already said that this is an unacceptable escalation because uh, this notion that uh, the deterrence, which means nuclear, uh, issue is back on the table is a worrisome development. Uh, that being said, uh, just before the invasion, in his rant or in his speech, Vladimir Putin already warned Western countries that if uh, they become an obstacle uh, for him in his intention uh, to conduct operations in what was supposed to be eastern Ukraine turned out to be the whole of Ukraine, uh, they would face consequences that they could not even imagine. Everyone then understood that he was talking about uh, the nuclear uh, deterrence or nuclear weapons. Uh, and let's re just remind our viewers that Russia is the number one nuclear power on this planet. They have over 6,300 uh, nuclear heads. The U.S. has 5,500. But obviously, the fact that there is even just discussion of uh, use of nuclear uh, power, we haven't heard this uh, for decades. And so this is a worrisome development. It is probably a tactic used by uh, Putin to put, indeed, uh, pressure on Ukraine, also uh, to basically respond to uh, the crippling sanctions that are being put in place by the West. And he probably did not anticipate that. He did not anticipate the Ukrainians to resist uh, more than uh, he thought they would. And he did not expect Vladimir 
uh, Zelensky to remain in Kiev. He probably thought that he would immediately jump on a plane to France, uh, the UK, or, or the US, for that matter. Uh, and also because he's seeing that they're united in their response, that airspaces are being closed, that sanctions hitting uh, Russian oligarchs, uh, Russian banks, but even Russia's central bank are now being put in place. And uh, probably he realizes it, that he will feel the brunt of those sanctions uh, much earlier and in a much deeper way than he expected. And obviously, there's also a worry that even though there's tight control of information in Russia, we've seen protests on the streets, immediate crackdown, of course, but the more it takes uh, the more lives are lost, Russian lives, but also Ukrainian lives, because this is a sensitive issue, Ukraine, for uh, Russians themselves. Uh, this could create problems at home for uh, Vladimir Putin. Russia's economy is not China. We're talking about, in terms of GDP, it's the equivalent of South Korea, which is perfectly respectable, but it's far from an economic superpower. Uh, so Vladimir Putin must be worried today, and this is maybe why He's uh, upping the ante and putting this nuclear issue on the table because that's probably the best card he holds.